I have never obstructed justice. He said, well, I want to I want to string a wire between the, the two World Trade Center towers. I knew he was a nut or a con man or something. As a child, I love to climb. Nobody could stop me. If you want something, nothing is impossible. He told me he was a French journalist. It's impossible, that's sure. So let's start working. It was 200 feet between the towers. And there were going to be some guys in the North Tower. The whole idea would be that Jean-Louis would send the arrow from one building to another. What? We just weren't ready. Ma'am! I didn't want to be liable for the death of a friend. Why did you do this? Police took a humorless view of the act. Why did Where you do it? There is no way. Beyond anything you can ever imagine, mind-boggling. I saw his face changing. Now I'm going to perform. This is probably the end of my life, to step on that one. Death is very close. And so I cried, looked, looked, and he saluted. I figured I was watching something that somebody else would never see again in the world. Thought it was once in a lifetime. Life should be lived on the edge. This is what we're here for. See every day as a true challenge, and then you live your life on the tightrope. He said, well, I want to I want to string a wire between the, the two World Trade Center towers. I knew he was a nut or a con man or something. As a child, I love to climb. Nobody could stop me. If you want something, nothing is impossible. He told me he was a French journalist. It's impossible, that's sure. So let's start working. It was 200 feet between the towers. And there were going to be some guys in the North Tower. The whole idea would be that Jean-Louis would send the arrow from one building to another. What? We just weren't ready. Ma'am! I didn't want to be liable for the death of a friend. Why did you do this? Police took a humorless view of the act. Why did Where you do it? There is no way. Beyond anything you can ever imagine. Mind-boggling. I saw his face changing. Now I'm going to perform. This is probably the end of my life, to step on that one. Death is very close. And so I cried, looked, looked, and he saluted. figured I was watching something that somebody else would never see again in the world. Thought it was once in a lifetime. Life should be lived on the edge. This is what we're here for. See every day as a true challenge and then you live your life on the tightrope. Here I am, young, 17 years old, with a bad tooth in one of those uncolorful uh, waiting room of a French dentist, and uh, it's, it's really lit with a little 40-watt bulb, and you have all ladies and people, you know, sheepishly looking at magazines, quiet, and suddenly I freeze 
because I have opened a newspaper at a page and I see something magnificent, something that inspires me. I see two towers. And the article says one day those towers will be built. They're not even there yet. And when they are, they will become the highest in the world. Now I need to have that, this little tangible uh, start of my dream. But everybody is watching, and, but I need that page. And so what I do is, under the cover of this, ah, I tear the page, put it under my jacket, and go out. Now, of course, I would have a toothache for a week. But what's the pain in comparison that now I have acquired my dream? Usually when you have a dream, the object of your dream is tangible, it's there, it's, it's, it's quixotic, but it's there nagging you, you know, confronting you. But the object of my dream doesn't exist yet. I started as a young, self-taught war worker to dream of not so much conquering the universe, but as a poet, conquering beautiful stages. One day he said, uh, I really would like to put a wire on the Notre Dame. And the uh, first, first day I thought it was a joke, but in the meantime I knew, uh, I knew that there was something uh, a little bit real about it. And then we started to talk more and more about it. And then we started to plan it. it took about a year to find the right way to do it. Uh, Jean-Louis m'avait immediately dit que c'était illegal. Donc euh, je savais que c'était illégal et c'est ce qui évidemment euh, euh, m'excitait un petit peu. Mais illégal mais pas mais pas vilain, pas laid quoi. C'était c'était magnifique en fait. Can you imagine you wake up in the morning in the city and uh, all of a sudden you see a highway walker in between uh, uh, Notre Dame? It's a dream. That's what really attracts me. It's the challenge part of doing something that's supposed to be impossible. And in the meantime, doing something that's so beautiful that doesn't, not only doesn't hurt anybody, but gives something to somebody. Et puis, euh, Philippe est apparu sur le fil. C'était extraordinaire. Et je rentre euh, tout excité. Et je me trouve là, et je vois, je me penche sur la nef, et je vois qu'une immense cérémonie avait lieu dans Notre-Dame. Il y avait là une dizaine de prêtres habillés tout en blanc, les bras en croix. Ils étaient couchés sur le sol, la tête contre le sol. J'étais sidérée, silencieuse et bon. Et l'organisme me dit, mais qu'est-ce qui se passe Qu'est-ce que vous faites Et je lui dis, mais il y a un funambule là-haut, il y a un funambule dans les tours. Oh, et ce monsieur me regarde d'un air charmant, tout émerveillé. Il me dit, ah bon, un funambule oh, Mais c'est extraordinaire.
we broke into the Sydney Harbour Bridge pylon one night and uh, carried all this equipment in, put a tightrope up, disappeared in the morning and then sat down on the, on the street and uh, watched Philippe walk backwards and forwards. that the wire walking activity is framed by death, it's great because then you have to take it very seriously. It, it's a little half a millimeter of mistake or a quarter of a second of inattention and you lose your life. This was the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the traffic was backed up. The police came, of course, within minutes. When he was taken away, I mean, the first thing he did was he picked the policeman's watch. Fleet manages to take the guy's watch off his wrist and hide it in his pocket. <laughs> the subway climbing the steps looking at them I knew that there were no dream I knew that it was my dream was was destroyed instantly impossible 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 it's clearly impossible not only to walk across this I have probably hardly thought of it but to bring almost like a ton of equipment secretly to rig a wire for hours to guideline it it's clearly out of human scale. But something in me pulls me toward touching it. That's when he spoke to me about his project. He said, well, I want to I want to string a wire between uh, the two World Trade Center towers. I said, OK. Sounds wild. <laughs> I mean, I'd never met um, a high wire walker before, so um, I had no idea what, nor did I even entertain the idea at the time of what the consequences of anything happening would be. It just sounded like a really fun adventure to get involved in. So I took it upon myself to say, sure, let's, let's work on it. The first occasion we went up in the elevator, we basically took the elevator to 86th floor. When we got off, there was a guard there. Um, he said, what are you doing here? No. So obviously we couldn't continue. So we took the elevator back down again, and then we realized, well, he actually said, well, let's just walk up. And we proceeded to climb up the 110 flights to the top. We are the top of the world. I see two slabs of concrete barely inhabited with some construction, no fence, no net, no nothing, and, and I am frozen to death. I see the other tower and I, I imagine the void and if I were to run um, on this slab, I will just fall to another life. And slowly I thought, okay, now it's impossible, that's sure. So let's start working. We took pictures of all these things, thinking that perhaps that might be where the cable would be tied, or just maybe would be a cable we could use. He wasn't sure how he was gonna rig it at that particular time. I decided in the staircase to draw a little fresco. 
as if I needed some tangible proof to show me that I was going through different steps and approaching the impossible of actually finding myself on that wire. I even rent a helicopter at some point, and then Jim Moore was with me taking pictures of the roof, of the equipment there, or making a model for measuring. But I also wanted a little bit to see if it was possible. He wanted to get higher than where he was going to be when he walked on the wire. It was a way of tricking his mind into not feeling fear by being higher than where he was going to be when he actually did the walk. Philippe and I traveled to New York together and I remember looking out through this hazy airplane window and seeing in the far distance the Twin Towers. We'd come all of this way and, and this was our, this is what we're here for. Metropolis, France's number one journal of urban planning. We are preparing a feature profile of the workers who are presently constructing the World Trade Center in New York. Our credentialed reporter, Philippe Petit, kindly requests your cooperation for this article. He told me he was a French journalist, and it was just not normal for me to say, show me your, your credentials, if you would. He was going to write a story about the World Trade Center for the French newspapers, and he had two photographers with him, and uh, I thought that was pretty good publicity. You completely trust the building yourself. Um, is it safe? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like tumbling down, falling down or something? Yeah. No, no, I'd say. <laughs> Here was this sort of long-haired Australian and this sort of very volatile Frenchman who couldn't speak great English, <laughs> so we were journalists, and we enlisted Jim Moore, and he was the cameraman. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was interesting because, uh, you know, here we are disguising ourselves as someone who are not, and, uh, and perfectly getting away with it, you know, it was wonderful. When you were working here and when the weather changed, do you, you, you stop because you just, uh, you couldn't work anymore? I mean, what do you mean, if we start doing a day up here and all of a sudden the weather gets bad, yeah. oh, we have to finish the day. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. So it happens in your life to work there on the top with very oh, yeah. bad conditions. Oh yeah. Yeah. But and you still... get a little bit scared of that. No, not really. I remember Jim would act like he was taking a photograph of a worker, then at the same time he'd put the camera down and he'd take a photograph of a pylon or, a, or an anchor, anchor point or something like that. The towers were not corners facing corners. They were askew, which was a problem for me to decide where to put my wire. So in principle, that's a cable across the two roof. I decided to attach the cable to what I believe were the strongest beam at the top of the roof. And then I'm gonna tie the wire to here on the south tower. A cable between two buildings of a long length, it sways, it goes up and down, and there is almost an invisible move, which is a torsion on itself. So what we devise, it's a, um, it's, it's called a cavality in the circus balance. It's actually a guide line that is perpendicular to the axis of the wire and it goes down to uh, the ground. Even with permission, we couldn't go a quarter of a mile to the ground, plus I needed a pair. Here's one and here's two. We know they cannot go down. So the solution was asymmetric rigging, which is like this. Here's the first attachment. Each cavality had two legs, a short one and a long one. So this is what I decided was the best for the situation. And now I am preparing for le coup. We are going to do it. The First thing I did, I prepared my bow. prepare the arrow and prepare the fishing line and, uh, and wait for them. So there was a signal for Jean-Louis to say, I am ready to shoot. And there was a signal for me to say, I saw your signal, I am ready. And I'm going to count till 10 
and then he will shoot. But there were no signal for I am not ready. <laughs> I not thought of that. And I was not ready. Finally, they, they give this big signal. I am ready. I've been waiting for so long that when he finally uh, gives the signal, instinctively, I took the, the bow, I aimed, and I aimed at him. And he was almost at the edge of the, of the building. I go hunting for the arrow. Nothing. Out of frustration, I take all my clothes off, and I think that the line, I will feel the line on my naked uh, skin. With a defeated heart, I climb down to the edge, and I feel a dancing fishing line caressing my thigh. The arrow was actually balancing um, precariously on the very edge of the building's corner. A, a, little, a little blow, uh, and it was breezy, would have simply make it fall. The first thing we did after uh, a few cordinas, a few little ropes getting bigger and bigger and stronger, was to bring a burlap bag. And this bag was carrying the very important item of the communication, the interphone. A little tinny toy intercom is connected. And we hear Philippe's voice on the other end. And that was an important moment. Now the four of us are together. The work is truly going to begin. The guard leaves. Jean-Francois hardly can talk. His head has been upside down for so long. But we go back, we rush, we get our shoes. And now we bring the equipment like mad people. And I put a little uh, trap in the staircase. And that would be like an alarm clock would be, ah, somebody is getting on your roof. By that time, everything was perfect. I mean, it was uh, not even midnight with a normal rigging. That means within three hours, everything would have been uh, perfect. Now we are ready to pull the wire. Philippe has a wire ready. The nylon rope is uh, in our hand. We are ready. Uh, at some point, I uh, uh, gave probably too much cable. And all of a sudden, I see the wire going. Tremendous noise. I thought, my God, what's going on? We almost lost the wire. So I called Philippe, what's going on? He said, yeah, we could not hold it, which is... Uh, very unfortunate. At that time, I was very worried. I think the first time I was really scared. Oh my God, he's exhausted like I am. I mean, not as much, but for what he has to do, it's, <laughs> it's really not a good thing. The wire is the worst wire we ever uh, did. And uh, I, I was really scared. On pensait tous que, évidemment, il, il est possible qu'il tombe. Hein. On y a tous pensé, mais on n'y croyait pas. On y pensait, mais on n'y croyait pas. And I had to make a decision of shifting my weight from one foot anchored to the building to the foot anchored on the wire. This is probably. I don't know, probably the end of my life to step on that wire. And on the other hand, something that I could not resist, and I didn't make any effort to resist, call me upon that cable. And, and death is very close. I start walking as a wire walker who is studying his cable. 
And instead of doing an entire study of the cable for the whole lens, seeing the first cavality and keep walking, seeing the middle, which is so soft and treacherous, seeing the second cavality, how it is. No, I do only go to the first cavality and I know enough. Now I'm going to perform. I saw his face changing. He was very tense and all of a sudden there was something uh, like a relief in him. And from that time I thought, that's it. He's secure, it's good. And wow, that's... Uh, that. <laughs> J'ai vu Philippe. Oh, J'ai vu Philippe là où c'était extraordinaire. Oh, c'était tellement, tellement beau. C'était comme s'il marchait sur un nuage. Et il y a eu des moments extraordinaires. Il s'est couché. Et ça, c'était l'extase de voir cette euh, image de Philippe couché là-haut. Et puis l'autre moment très très fort, c'est quand il... Il est très... C'était tellement beau. Et euh, quand il s'est agenouillé, il y a un moment où il s'est agenouillé et il a salué. Et donc, euh, et donc, je criais, regardais, regardais, et les gens ont commencé à, à se rassembler, mais personne ne voyait. Et ils me disaient, mais qu qu'est-ce qu que vous voyez Et je leur disais, mais un funambule, regardez, un funambule, il marche, il marche. I sit down on the Y in one of my crossing and I did something that amazed people. I actually look all the way down to look at something that I will never in my life see again. So I can tell you, and yes, probably it's a lie, but to me it's not. I heard the crowd. I saw the crowd. I hear them murmur. Beyond anything you can ever imagine, it's just mind-boggling. The awe of the event and the overwhelming largeness of the scale of the situation took my mind into a place where I really wasn't that concerned about him. It just, it, it was magical. It was just, uh, it was just profound. <laughs> 